Well, one question I think is legitimate is, could there be an easier way to find Nash equilibria? I mean, what if people had like 10 choices they could make? Then all of a sudden I've got a hundred possible combinations of outcomes. And I, using the definition, I would have to exhaustively explore all hundred of those potential outcomes. So I want to come up with something a little bit easier. And the thing that is easier is something referred to as a best response function. So I'm going to construct this best response function for each player. This is probably where your author went. He probably didn't use my methodology. And although I prefer my methodology, uh, since we're not in the classroom together, you know, I'll, I'll work with either type of methodology. Uh, there's more than one way to get to the answer. Uh, but the way I'm showing you will work in far more cases than what your author is showing you. So, but let me get started. So let's construct a best response function. Now this time, for every player I, so that means I got to do this for everybody, my best re response function says, best response function for player I is a function of, what's this argument that it's a function of? Well, the minus sign in front of the I means everybody else but I. So what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be looking at a strategy combinations of every other player, the one that's not player I. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a set. I'm going to, I'm going to look at every strategy player I could choose that gives them a highest payoff, that's what this inequality is saying, given what the other player is doing. Okay. Now the math, I don't know if it looks confusing. You know, I struggled with it and then when it stopped looking confusing, I never thought about it looking confusing again. So let me walk through it. Okay. Well, here's kind of the goal. I'm going to construct the best response function for both players. Then I'm going to draw a picture of them. And when I draw a picture, I am looking for intersections of best response functions. And the intersections are going to give me solutions. So here we go. Let me go to a new game. This is probably one that showed up in semesters gone by, still to this initial game you know, where I had people going down the freeway. But I was just looking for a different way to analyze it. So here we go. Notice the payoffs are different. That's okay. We're just looking at a second game now. All right, well, how do I construct a best response function? Well, I'm constructing a best response function from player one. Notice that's a subscript on the B. B stands for best response. Subscript says for which player. And what am I responding to? I'm responding to a choice by the other player. Oh, huh. well, the other player only has two choices. They can either speed up or they can slow down. Well, what if player two chose to speed up? If player two chooses to speed up, I am forced into this first column. So I am in this first column now, and I say, well, what strategy gives me player one the highest payoff? So I am comparing this three to this one, and I'm saying, oh, well, three is a bigger number. So Player two chooses to speed up. I respond with slow down. All right. Well, what if player two chooses to slow down? Now I'm over in this column. Okay. Well, I look at my payoffs in that column. Four is the biggest payoff. It comes from me playing speed up. So if player two is choosing to slow down, I'm going to choose to speed up. This is my best response function. Probably the easiest function you've ever you've ever created if you don't overthink it, okay? You know, most of the time when we're creating function, there's an infinite number of choices in the domain of the function, if that word means anything to you. The domain is where choices come from. Well, here I only have two. So I can construct, well, how do I respond when player two makes a choice if I'm player one? All right, well, now i got to reverse roles. And I have to construct a best response for player two. And their response is to a choice by player one. Well, once again, 
Player one only has two choices, speed up or slow down. Pay close attention to this, okay? If player one chooses to speed up, essentially I am in this first row. And I am looking for the highest payoff for player B in this first row. I'm comparing this second one to this second four. Four is a bigger number, so I should respond to player one speeding up, if I'm player B, to me slowing down. So player one speeding up, I slow down. Well, what if player one chooses to slow down? Okay. Well, if player one chooses to slow down, player A, essentially I'm in the second row. So I am looking at player B's payoffs, given that player A has pushed me into this second row. So I'm comparing this second three to this two over here. And three is a bigger number which comes from player B choosing speed up. So player one slows down, player A slows down, player two or B speeds up. Well, I want to put these two best response functions into a picture. How do I draw a picture of something so simplistic? Uh, and I know, you're, I'm, I know you're looking at it and you're saying, well, this is not simple. But once again, got to work with me. This is actually the simplest object mathematically that you've probably ever worked with. It's not the simpleness that might be bothering you. It's the newness. So let's wear the newness off just a little bit. All right, well, my picture is going to have strategies on the axis. So player one strategies are going to be on the horizontal axis or player A's. And I don't know what I was thinking when I started switching from A's to ones, but I did it. So player one is choosing slow down and speed up. Player two, two is choosing slow down and speed up. All right, well, let's go back to player one's best response function. There is a best response. I'm going to put a point, just a dot, in my picture at the point A1 equals slow down, A2 equals speed up. So A1 equals slow down, A2 equals speed up, put a dot. I'm going to go put another dot in the picture. Player one speeds up, player two slows down. Player one speeds up, player two slows down, another dot. All right, now I'm going to draw this picture. There's a dot at the point A1 sped up, A2 slowed down. A, A1 sped up, A2 slowed down. I put in a dot or an asterisk. Player one slows down, player two speeds up. I need to put in a marker at that combination. Player one slows down, player two speeds up. There's my marker. I want these two pictures to overlap, kind of like we did with supply and demand, right? So I want to overlap them. Where they intersect is a Nash equilibrium. So we have two Nash equilibrium in this game as well. They are at player one speeds up, player two slows down, so here. And they are at player one slows down, player two speeds up, this other dot. Two Nash equilibria in this game, and we arrived at it by uh, drawing best response functions. This was much faster. I don't know if you noticed it, but if you could do, if you can construct best response functions, the speed picks up. Okay. Well, this is uh, this video was to introduce best response functions, so I am going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, but once I, when I leave it, the, the next video is going to be more about um, just games in general and where the econ profession took these games as soon as Nash published his dissertation.